And Major League Baseball now needs to make a change to its rule and do it right away. Make sure it's in time for the playoffs. I would say make sure it's in time for the next three days. That game-ending walk-off plays are automatically replayed by, there's no booth, they do it in Major League Baseball Central Command. That is end of story. So Brian Price doesn't have to not hear a phone ring because the crowd noise or wonder what to do, and the umpires can't walk off. You don't walk off, you walk directly to a replay monitor, put on, put on your headsets and figure it out. John Morosi of Fox Sports joined us right right here on the Rich Eisen Show. You think that's possible, John, to do that? It's a great idea, Rich, and it makes a lot of sense. I do think this, though. Um, Brian Price could have saved all of us a lot of grief today if he had just instantaneously walked out of the dugout or even gotten the umpire's attention when the game ended. And certainly, I understand there was a lot going on at that moment, but when the game is over and you still have your challenge, you literally have nothing to lose except for just having lost the game. So you could really, as a matter of practice, the losing manager could just make it his own policy that whenever the game is over, if there is even the slightest chance that there was anything untoward on that last play, I'm going to ask him to review it. And, and I think that that's really the one thing we could see going forward is managers make it a policy, take it upon themselves to uh, review the last play if there's even a hint a speck of uncertainty about the way things played out that you just make it your own personal policy to do so. But as you point out, Rich, it, it would on a certain level make some sense that New York look at all game ending plays yeah. from their very beginning before anything even is walked off the field by the umpire. I'm actually surprised that wasn't the case already, John. I mean, I'm surprised that, 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 that it, it, it is on the shoulders of a, a manager to do it and let alone an opposing manager you know, you're, he, he's supposed to know the, the grounds rule and he's supposed to know that that might be a double. As you heard, both announcers who know the stadium very well were in the middle of their call wondering what was happening. Uh, you shouldn't put it on the shoulders of a, of, of a manager in a situation like that. Just do it yourself. That's it. End of story. Well, that's a very good point, Rich. And I think it's, it's interesting, too, that, that the rule is written and even Brian Price described it afterward. He said, well, they said I had to do it within 10 seconds. But that's not even the rule as written right now. The rule is immediately. Now, we could interpret the word immediately in any different ways. All of us uh, that are listening right now, we could all say, well, 10 seconds is immediate or five seconds is immediate or maybe even 30 seconds is immediate. However we define it, that's why we have lawyers and billable hours, uh, which, which certainly is, is a wonderful thing. But I think you look at it, and, and that's probably where the uncertainty came from, is that even Brian Price himself, Rich, as he was speaking about it afterward, wasn't totally clear on what the rule is. So I think all the teams that are involved in the playoffs now just got a very nice little reminder about what the rule is right now, and it's my expectation we will see every team that's involved in the playoffs and certainly all these consequential games this weekend, if there's even a slight chance of there being a, a, a an ending like what you saw last night in St. Louis, they're going to challenge it or at least ask the umpires to review it, yeah. even if they're out of challenges, which we, we have seen many times, Rich. The umpires, I think we have to say this on their behalf, they've been very good. Even when teams have been out of challenges, if there's a reasonable reason to do that from the seventh inning on, they have been very good about taking it upon themselves to initiate a crew challenge and make sure they get the call right. They should just have a crew challenge, period. You know what I mean? Just th that that – but, you know, Major League Baseball and the commissioner is so concerned about length of games now. Right. You know, it, it, length of games should never trump getting something right. Period. End of story, in my mind. And end of and from seventh inning on, everything should be reviewed. Everything. Get it right. And 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 get it out of the hands of the managers. And w so what what would it have been price? What would have been the penalty for price to, to go ahead and do it anyway? It's not like the NFL where you lose a, a crucial timeout if you're wrong. Precisely. There, so, is, there is literally no downside. There's literally no downside. And, Rich, I think it's, it's interesting, and I'm glad we're having this conversation, because sure. when baseball began, the, the replay program, it's interesting. Baseball, at no point in time, was the, was the maxim, was the, was the reason for this uh, change that they wanted to get every call right which is kind of funny, isn't it? Baseball, is never, baseball never came up and said, we are here with replay and we're going to get everything right. Their goal was to prevent 
the rare game-changing missed call like we saw in the playoffs a couple of different times in recent years, and they want to avoid Jim Joyce from being the lead story in every morning news program in America the next morning after this is missed call back in 2010. It was to avoid the major calls getting wrong and changing the course of playoff games. The one thing that baseball never anticipated would happen, Rich, is what we've seen now is does the player stay on the base for the whole slide? We're seeing guys getting called out now on replay review when they've been getting called safe for 100 years, when we never even would have thought that would have been a possible review. So that's why baseball, the one major score we have, Rich, that doesn't have the clock, when you've instituted now this element of time into things, it's changed the essence of the game a little bit. And we're seeing now that there is, uh, uh, there is some maybe some concern about when you introduce instant replay and notion of a clock for any reason into a sport that's never had one, there are some unintended consequences. And I do think this is not the last time we'll be having this conversation. So in a couple minutes I have with you left, can the San Francisco Giants – File a protest, even though they're not no. in the game. No, okay. they can't. They can't. I'm sure they would love to. They can't. Sure. The result of last night's game, the game is considered final. And, uh, and wow. I will point out too, Rich, that is that while last night's game is final, we've got, as you know, a lot of weather situations right now up and down the East Coast, which could affect some games being played. I was I spoke with an MLB source yesterday and was told. There right now is no concern they have to move any games, which, of course, we've seen happen in the past where Milwaukee has been used when there's been adverse weather for multiple days in a row. They're not concerned about that. But as you alluded to earlier, there could be a game 162 in Detroit on Monday between Cleveland and the Tigers if that game matters for either the Tigers' wild card hopes or, very interestingly, if that game would determine home field advantage between the Red Sox and Indians, who are right now within a half game of each other, if that game would be consequential for Cleveland and not Detroit because of mere playoff seeding, it would be played in Detroit on Monday as well. So we've already got a lot of scheduling conditions going on right now across the major league. So the Tigers could be eliminated, but needing to play to determine where Cleveland and Boston start their yes. playoffs. And, and what if think but, they would love that coming to the ballpark. Exactly, back home, right. With the, U- the weekend in Atlanta. So there's a lot going on there. And, of course, a, a lot of conversation too, Rich, about the fact that Tigers do not have the DH this weekend in Atlanta. The final weekend of the season is going to determine their playoff fate. And Victor Martinez not in the lineup because, of course, no DH there. That's ridiculous. So, and last one for you. If the Tigers do have to play that in order to, deter- to determine whether they get in and they get in, so what, where, or maybe get in to just uh, have a playoff to get in. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, what would that yeah. mean? I mean, would baseball push the wild card game for the uh, American League to Wednesday or Thursday? I mean, is that what's being yeah. discussed right now in a way? Precisely. And and wow. right now, uh, that, that AL game is scheduled for Tuesday. But if the Tigers and Indians have to play on Monday, potentially, if the, if the results cooperate, then they might still be able to play that game on Tuesday. However, if the Tigers, Jays, and Orioles are all tied, then we're going to see a three day wild card procedure, I will call it, because they would have to have a game that basically they'd have to have two days to get those three teams down to two. And then the third day would be the actual scheduled wild card game, which, based on what we're talking about, could happen as late as Thursday. So, yeah, so we could have a bit of a delayed start to the AL playoff. Good thing you went to Harvard, JP. <laughs> Thanks for explaining it. Well, I appreciate I, it. I, I, I couldn't get into Michigan, Michigan Rich. That was what, I couldn't get well, into Michigan, so I went to Harvard. It's the Harvard of the Midwest. Thanks That's for exactly thanks. Right. I have that shirt, by the way. <laughs> At John Morosi, MLB Network and Fox. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. My pleasure, Rich. Thank you. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.